Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to answer the question of whatever happened to the ancient Avastinarians who were a population in Central Asia which later migrated to Iran. So there is currently a major misconception regarding this and that is that the ancient Aryans who migrated to Iran were largely replaced over time by invaders such as the Arabs as well as the Turco-Mongols and also the Caucasians during the Safavid period. Based on the latest genetic evidence, this notion has now been falsified and this video will serve as the ultimate expose of individuals who have uh, served to facilitate hatred towards Iranians, though no specific mention will be made of any of these as I've covered them in my previous video, specifically Jason Reza Jordani and white nationalists. For this reason, this video will not serve to present evidence for the claims made by these individuals, but nonetheless, the genetic evidence presented in this video will largely refute the ludicrous claims made by white nationalists. Again, this video will be a very short analysis based on the averages we have for modern-day Iranian populations in comparison to ancient Iron Age Iranian populations, specifically those from the sites of Rabat and Sir Karakat. Overall, my analysis here will serve to prove that there is indeed a great degree of genetic continuity in modern-day Iran, present at around 90 to 95% in the majority of Iran's population today, which again is quite interesting. Thus, please share this video as much as you can and share it with as many people in order to spread the word about Iran's genetic continuity and the genetic character of modern-day Iranians. So without further ado, I'd like to begin this analysis. So here are the breakdowns for the sample sets we have from the sites of Sir Karakat and Rabat. So you can see these are the Ovestinarians and they're on average 41.6% Bronze Age steps. So this is Yamnayan ancestry, 30.5% Caucasian Iranian, 20.6% Neolithic Anatolian, 3.3% Neolithic East Asian, 2.6% Neolithic Levantine and 1.4% South Asian. So what you can see here is that among the Avastinarians, they were mostly of Bronze Age steppe and Caucasian Iranian descent. And what's interesting here is that these populations were not purely of Nordic or Germanic descent. As you can see clearly, they have significant Caucasian Iranian ancestry at 30.5%. And the majority of this ancestry is actually from Neolithic Iranian farmers. So what these results indicate is that on a genetic level, these early Avastinarians had significant Caucasian Iranian ancestry from Central Asia, from the Bima culture, thus proving the process of Bima acquisition. And for this reason, they were not purely a Nordic European population, as I previously mentioned. And you can also see a bit of East Asian, Neolithic, Levantine, and South Asian hunter-gatherer ancestry, though nonetheless, this is minimal. And these uh, Avastinarians were mostly of a three-way descent, descending from three populations primarily. So yeah, overall these results prove that even the Aryans who migrated to Iran had significant ancestry deriving from a Caucasian Iranian source which is quite interesting and remarkable. So yeah, that's essentially it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at the genetic averages for modern day Iranians, Kurds and other Azerbaijanis and proving that there is indeed a great degree of genetic continuity among these populations. So here we have the breakdowns for the Iranian samples that I've collected from professional studies. So you can see their Iran calculated ancestry is heavy here ranging from 36.8 to as high as 61.6%. Then you can see significant Western Asian ancestry here ranging from 32.4 to as high as 51.2%. So what this means is that the Western Aryan population left a major genetic imprint on the genome of modern day Iranians. Moving on from that, you can see minimal foreign ancestry deriving from an ancient Hellenic, a medieval Turkic, an antiquity Arab, and a South Asian and Sub-Saharan African source. So overall, you can see that there is around 85 to 95% genetic continuity in the majority of these populations. And what's interesting here is that the Arab, the South Asian, the Sub-Saharan, the medieval Turkic, and the ancient Hellenic elements here, ancestral sources rather, are at a minimum. So what these results prove is that modern day Iranians are largely genetically of Iran Calcolithic which is the native Iranian farmer element and a western Aryan descent. Now moving on you can see that these are the distances that you can see here and again you can see they are at a minimal with the exception of three of the samples they do not exceed two which are the Gilaki, the Iranian and the Laristani. So what this means is that overall these models are very much sound and excellent. 
Now moving on, we have the breakdowns for the uh, Iranians uh, from the east, from Khorasan. So you can see there are Western Iranian ancestry ranges from 37.6 to 53.6%. There are on Calcolithic ancestry ranges from 26.2 to as high as 34%. Their South Asian ancestry is a bit elevated here and peaks at 13.2%, which is interesting. Moving on, you can see ancestry deriving from uh, an, a medieval Turkic source at around about 14.4%. That is the maximum, but the range is from 0 to 14.4%. Then you can see a bit of antiquity here about the ranging from 2.2 to as high as 4.2%, but it's absent in two of the samples, so I should say it ranges from 0 to 4.2%. Then you can see minimal sub Saharan African Bantu ancestry and very tiny amounts of modern Caucasian ancestry. So what these results on the modern day Iranians from Khorasan indicate is that they also have a great degree of genetic continuity. So here are the distances for these models. So you can see that they're excellent and they range from 0.9 to 1.44% which is interesting. But overall what you can see is that the fits are excellent. What this means is that these models are very much sound. So moving on from that, up next we have the Iranians from Azad Mard's collection. So you can see there on Calcolithic ancestry ranges from 41.8 to 61.6%. There are Western Aryan ancestry ranges from around about 26% to as high as 41%. Then you can see modern Caucasian ancestry here ranging from around about 0% to as high as 12.2%. So it is minimal here, though nonetheless elevated compared to the other samples. Then you can see minimal antiquity Arab ancestry not exceeding more than 7.8%. South Asian ancestry does not exceed more than 4.2%. And ancient Hellenic ancestry does not exceed more than 8.2%. Then you also have a bit of medieval Turkic ancestry which only appears in two of the samples but does not exceed more than 8.4%. Now after this you also have sub-Saharan African ancestry which only appears in three of the samples but does not exceed more than 1.2%. Sorry, in two of the samples. So overall, what this means is that on a genetic level, the Iranians from Azad Mard's personal research are also mostly of ancient Iranian descent and are not heavily or thoroughly admixed with the Turco-Mongols and the Arabs. So here are the fits for these uh, models and you can see that they're very much sound with the highest fit being 1.63% in the Lure Kuchak. So what this means is that these models again are very much accurate and sound and largely attached to the excellent uh, source populations that I've gathered here and I've constructed using the available genetic evidence and data. So up next we have the Kurds and you can see that regarding their genetic origins they're on Calcolithic ancestry ranges from 37.4 to as high as 59.6%. Their Western Aryan ancestry here ranges from around about 28% to as high as 47.4%. Then you can see minimal ancient Hellenic, though nonetheless elevated ancestry here, peaking at 14.8%. Then you can see a bit of antiquity Arab ancestry, though this does not exceed more than 10% in the Kurd from Iraq. Then you can see South Asian ancestry here being minimal, not exceeding more than 4.8% in the Iranian Kurd from Karmanshah. Medieval Turkic ancestry only appears in 3-4 of the samples but does not exceed more than 4% and finally modern Caucasian ancestry only appears in 3 of the samples and does not exceed 9%. So what these results indicate is that on a genetic level the Kurds are largely of Iran Calcolithic and a Western Aryan descent though they do have elevated amounts of ancient Hellenic ancestry when compared to the other Iranians. They also tend to have less South Asian as well as East Asian ancestry and around the same ancestry deriving from an Arab source. Nonetheless, what you can see with these results is that the Kurds are also largely genetically Iranian. Here are the distances or fits for these samples and you can see that they do not exceed 2.47 at the most and for the most part they are not greater than 1.74% which is interesting. So what this means is that these models are excellent. So overall with the Kurds you can see that they also have a great degree of genetic continuity which is quite interesting. Now the final population to be discussed here are the Azerbaijanis and what you'll see is that as you can see here they tend to have more foreign ancestry compared to the general Iranian population. So regarding the Azerbaijanis you can see 
that their on calculated cancer ranges from 18.8 to as high as 55.2 percent. Their Western Asian answer here ranges from 10.8 to as high as 43.6 percent. Then you can see modern Caucasian answer being heavy here, ranging from around zero to as high as 34.4 percent. So modern day Azerbaijanis do have a Caucasian substrate to their ancestry. Then you can also see ancient Hellenic ancestry here peaking at around 12.6 percent, but nonetheless being minimal. Medieval Turkic ancestry also appears here in a significant significant degree and you can see that the peak here is around 14.4 percent and then you can see antiquity Arab ancestry peaking here at around 4.2 percent so among modern day Iranians they have the least Arab ancestry and finally South Asian ancestry only appears in two of the samples but does not exceed more than five percent. So genetically speaking, you can see that the Azerbaijanis of today are more admixed compared to the Iranians and the Kurds as they have significant modern Caucasian as well as ancient Hellenic and medieval Turkic ancestry, which is interesting. Though nonetheless, you can see that they're still mostly of Iran, Chalcolithic and a Western Asian descent for the most part, though there are a couple of exceptions here. So with these results, you can clearly see that the Azerbaijanis are a bit distinct from other Iranian populations genetically. So here are the distances for these models and you can see again they're excellent and for the most part the fits are great so you can see that the peak here is 1.72 percent but nonetheless for the most part it's below 1.5 percent so these fits are excellent and what this proves is that the other Iranians of today are mostly of Iranian descent specifically Iran calculatic and a Western Asian descent which is interesting and only have minimal foreign ancestry which again is quite interesting though nonetheless you can see for the most part they do tend to have elevated amounts of medieval Turkic ancestry and less Arab and less South Asian ancestry which again is quite interesting and remarkable. So overall this video took a look at the genetic origins of contemporary Iranians, Kurds and Azerbaijanis and proved that they're mostly of Iran, Chalcolithic and a West Indian descent and have minimal foreign ancestry which again is interesting and the most continuity is found among today's Iranians as well as some Kurdish groups at around 85 to 95 percent which is quite interesting. So yeah, that's essentially it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.